In honor of Mental Health Awareness Month, we're dedicating May's episodes to treatments for depression. So far, we've covered cognitive behavioral therapy and psilocybin, and today we're covering ketamine. Ketamine is a controlled substance that is approved for use as an anesthetic. It is also used by humans, unapproved, in high doses to create a disassociative state. And within the past few years, it's also been approved as a nasal spray for the treatment of depression. And that's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. Okay, so the drug approved for depression called esketamine or Spravato, isn't straight up ketamine, but it's related. It was approved by the FDA in March of 2019 and is self-delivered intranasally for treatment-resistant depression. It's an attractive option because it's more fast-acting than other antidepressant medications, but it is not a first line of defense. To be eligible for this treatment, patients must have tried at least two depression medications and not responded to them. Data from clinical trials suggests that the nasal spray significantly improves symptoms of depression and decreases suicidal risk. Some side effects were apparent, including increased blood pressure, dissociation, and altered cognition, but lasted only a short time. Administration of the drug is tightly controlled. The drug is self-administered, but only under the supervision of a healthcare provider, and it cannot be taken home by the patient. It's taken twice a week for the first month once a week during the second month, and then once a week or once every other week thereafter, always in conjunction with an ongoing oral antidepressant. Currently, there isn't a lot of high quality data on whether the effects of the drug last once treatment is discontinued. The data we do have are mixed, with some suggesting that long-term effects might be limited after the drug is no longer taken. We'll need more trials to answer that question and to understand the safety and other effects of taking the drug long-term. So how does it work to improve depression? We don't know for sure yet, which is actually the case for almost every depression treatment currently available. One of the major theories is that it increases brain plasticity, which in basic terms means the brain's ability to change its activity by reorganizing its wiring or structure. While ketamine doesn't act at just one site in the brain or even on just one receptor, its effects on the glutamate system are important here. Glutamate is a neurotransmitter, or a chemical released by neurons, or major cells in the brain, to communicate with other cells. Glutamate is one of the most abundant neurotransmitters in the brain, and it plays an enormous role in basic brain function. So altering glutamate signaling in the brain can easily change how the brain's working. We don't yet understand the brain well enough to leverage this information very precisely, but we think this glutamate manipulation may be the way that ketamine helps with depression, potentially via regeneration and or creation of new nerve cell connections in the brain. Drug's a little pricey, but is covered by most insurances, and the company that makes it also has a patient assistance program. You may have noticed ketamine clinics popping up around the country, or even mail services of things like ketamine lozenges, which are separate from the drug Spravato that we've discussed here. Though doctors can prescribe these for off-label use by patients, they aren't FDA approved to treat depression and aren't generally covered by insurance. They can be dangerous because the side effects of ketamine can be serious if patients aren't carefully screened and drug delivery isn't carefully managed and these services operate with very little oversight. If you suffer from treatment-resistant depression and you think you'd like to try this treatment pathway, we encourage you to talk to your doctor about the safest way to do so. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this previous episode on psilocybin for treating depression and the episode before that on CBT. We always like it when you like the video and subscribe to the channel down below and head on over to patreon.com slash healthcare triage where you can help make the show bigger and better. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Edward Lillehome, and Brian Nam, and of course, our surgeon admiral, Sam.